genocide here with the black metal guitar lesson series called the devil is in the details this is the third part um, and this is actually 3c because the third part was broken down into three three separate videos uh, labeled 3a 3b and 3c um, the last video which was 3b uh, we discussed various styles of black metal and some of the bands that represent them and uh, you know manifest that style uh, predominantly in their music and uh, what I would like to do now is show you how to play some riffs from a couple of the different styles of black metal uh, you'll learn how to use your speed picking uh, in these different subgenre styles um, and what this should be is a springboard for you then to write your own music and your own riffs. Um, you know, it helps seeing how existing material is broken down. Um, I personally do not learn other people's music. I never have. Um, I do like learning like Beethoven songs. I'll turn them into like a black metal song or, you know, classical music. But I've never learned other people's uh, stuff. I've always worried about it influencing my playing too much. So, these are just riffs. I, I'm not playing these songs the traditional way that the guitarists from these bands necessarily play it because I don't know how they play it because I'm not them. And every song can be set up so many different ways and still be sound the exact same, but the, the actual playing setup would be drastically different. Uh, I mean, if you get these, you know, they have these instructional videos and, you know, how to do the solos of Stevie Vai, and then they have the, you know, well, they got like several videos on how to play his solos. And uh, I wanted to see how these guys actually pulled off, rep, you know, recreating a Stevie Vai solo. And all three guys set the solos up 100% completely different from each other. You know, they sounded basically the same, but the techniques and the setup and the picking patterns were 100% different. The positions on the neck were different. Um, and then you, if you look at the tab that Stevie Vai uh, notated for the Eat em and Smile album uh, that this, you know, these solos were off of, his tab notation was different than what either of the three guys did. You know, sometimes parts of, you know, the guy's thing was right, but, um, so there isn't a right way to play these. There, of course, is an original way based on the guitarist that wrote the music, how he plays it, but there is no right way to play it in terms of, you know, how you're gonna set it up. So this is my own way. Um, I could hear these melodies in my head, and so I played along with, with the, <laughs> music because I wanted a few songs to be able to demonstrate to you. Um, okay, so now we have the melodic style of black metal. You know, I've demonstrated that a lot. And we have the Gorgora song, To Build a Man. All right, now that starts seventh fret on the D string. We're using this, one of our two favorite patterns, the one, three, four. The other one uh, that's famous is the one, two, four, the Dorian shape. I usually consider this the Phrygian shape. Um, and this center riff, is almost the whole riff is like a pedal point for the other notes I mean normally a pedal point is one note like a, the root note but the way Inferno actually set this up it's like that whole riff is the pedal point for the other accenting notes and it's played um, first seventh fret Ten, nine, ten, and 
seven seven. fret, A string, seventh fret, G string, back to seventh. Ten and then or or nine and then ten on the D string. So that Once you have this pattern down, you know, you want to, you, you definitely want to practice slowly at first, you know, with. All right, and as you're doing it, you want to practice all of the picking mechanics we've discussed. Properly holding the pick, uh, muting strings so they're not ringing out, right? And you want to also practice adding vibrato and giving life to the notes. Okay, uh, because that's what breathes life. You know, any guitarist can just hit that note, right? But what gives that note life is what you do with it. Okay, so I want you to really feel the melody because I'm all about the melodic hook, man. We need to get these melodic hooks going. You know, because without melody or even uh, the structure of playing off of melody with dissonance uh, if you don't have that you don't have something musical occurring you know in a lot of mainstream music especially nowadays it really uh, the melodies are very flat so one thing I always try to do with my metal is inject as much melody as possible all right so now we have the Gorgroth building a man And then what you want to do is double pick it. And then rev it up to speed. Um, that song is faster than 160 beats. Um, that riff to my ear, it sounds like about 180. It's it's pretty it's pretty fast, pretty fast. So it's it's a a simple pattern though, very simple pattern that you will be able to work with. 
and develop your speed picking within the context. It's a, a great melody too. It's very catchy. All right, my friends, let's move on. Now, this is a technique of using chords. You know, I usually call this the more dissonant style of black metal. Um, and I have two different examples we're going to look at. The first is Dark Throne, the kings of this style, and then uh, a Nargoroth song. Um, so, basically, you have several choices when using chords, right? You can use diatonic chords, which have two notes in them. You can use triple chords you can use you know or, or you can use full chords um, the full chord chunks is what we're gonna look at last um, that's a style that mayhem used a bit they were like one of the first ones to use it um, and then satiricon makes heavy use of it uh, well, really on Volcano especially, they really make use of it. And it's a technique Emperor uses. Uh, using the full chord cluster and kind of arpeggioing, uh, you know, it with a sweep and letting certain notes ring out. Um, but we'll, we'll handle that one last. Uh, but let's look at the use of, you know, uh, diatonic chords, all right? Um, this is a song from... Uh, Dark Throne called Transylvanian Hunger, and this is a, a, a freaking classic, of course. If you're not hip to it, you, uh, you're dysfunctional with your black metal, my friend. Get hip to it. Uh, now, I wouldn't say I enjoy everything Dark Throne has done, because their older stuff was more death metal, and the newer stuff I'm just not into. Uh, but especially Transylvanian Hunger and the few albums after that were very, very unique, very well done. Um, and they have that droning quality. You know, uh, that's something Burzum uses too, is the droning, transcendental quality. Um, so with these chords, you know, to really bring them out, you use the black metal tone. And these chords are fairly dissonant. And that coupled with the tone gives this kind of airy atmospheric you know vibe and and how you record it there's also recording techniques uh and I, i'm not referring to trying to use poor quality i mean there are legitimate techniques we use to get a real black metal sound just not have <laughs> lo-fi production um the song Transylvanian Hunger uses an open string. It uses the A string, okay, to drone in the background. And you, the, the first note is on the 12th fret D string. Uh, the second note is on the 11th, then the 10th. Back to the tenth. Okay. You see that? Picking, using economy, picking, raking in one direction. up to speed <laughs> All right, so 
how that is played is as follows. Open. The A string is open. It is picked simultaneously as the 12th fret. With, it's, it's a four beat stroke. Now, of course, I'm speed picking it, but I'm saying the accents, it's, it's four. Okay. Four beats with the 12th fret. Four with the 10th. Four with the 9th. And then you do a augmented uh, fifth chord, right? Which uh, is the seventh fret on the A string and 10th fret on the D string. And then you raise your pinky from the D string and go from that augmented dissonant to the straight fifth which is on the A string 7th fret and D string 9th. Okay? Okay, up to speed. <laughs> 